the Holy Ghost. Amen. So glad to be here. If you love Bishop and Pastor, would you get loud and clap your hands and thank the Lord for them? Truly appreciate them so much. Appreciate the support you gave our church. It's such a blessing. And when Bishop called this week and said, where are you? And I said, I'm home. He said, well, I'm 45 minutes from your building. I said, oh, God in heaven. So we ran down there and he anointed every chair in that place. He anointed the owner of the building. When he left, the owner said, who was that man? I said, I'm trying to be like him. I don't know. It's amazing. It was an incredible moment. Aren't you thankful for such an incredible bishop, an incredible leader for all these years? And Pastor, I give you honor too. I love you very much. Bishop Cox, I give you honor this morning. Love you so much, sir. Appreciate his leadership in this district so many years. Aren't you thankful for such incredible, incredible men of God? So thankful for my family, my wife and children. We have been burning the midnight oil. and We were in Texaco camp meeting Thursday night, Friday night, and drove home Friday night and drove here yesterday. And Friday night, a man had skin cancer on his face. And we prayed, and he went home to wash his face, and the cancer fell off into the sink, and God healed him of that. That's a a miracle-working God. Amen. John chapter... Now, you you got to know, I I interrupt everybody around here, okay? Nicole, step out and run up here real quick. I'm going to tell you what happened here last Sunday before last, was it? She had MS, and she felt like God healed her. She put her medicine aside, and she ain't had one problem since. That's what God does right there. Come on, somebody ought to praise the Lord for what he's doing. He knows where you are. John chapter 3, verse 1. Very popular text. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Same came to Jesus by night, said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water, somebody say water, and of the Spirit, somebody say Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. My assignment this morning is to preach to you a life saving moment a life saving moment are you ready for what the lord's going to do in this place today are you ready to see god wash away sins and god fill people with his spirit thank you jesus loose the gift of faith in jesus name you may be seated not every day not every week not every month and not even every year but every once in a while Everybody in this room will have a life-changing moment. A text message can change your life. An email, a phone call, a doctor report, uh, a, a word from somebody in the family. It can be good or it can be bad, but every once in a while there is an event or something that takes place that you don't forget the rest of your life. That day changed my life, positive or negative. Someone dies in your family that changes your life someone dies and leaves you millions of dollars (laughs) that changes your life it's a life-changing moment miracles are life-changing if you'd have been there that day when the red sea opened up and you watched a couple million people walk across on dry ground you probably wouldn't forget that the next morning because that was a life-changing experience Or had you been there when the walls of Jericho fell down? Or when you saw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego walking in the fire and yet not being burned? That is a life-changing moment. Or had you been there watching Jesus walk on the water or feed 
the 5,000 or call Lazarus out of the grave. Those are moments that you look back and say, wow, I'll believe the rest of my life because that moment changed my life. Nicodemus came to Jesus for a life-changing moment. Tell me about these miracles that you're doing that everybody's talking about. Tell me about all the people that you're healing. I want to know about the life-changing stuff. And yet Jesus seems to ignore him and everything he's wanting to see and everything he's wanting to talk about because there's something more important than a life-changing moment. And that is a life-saving moment. A life-changing moment comes from time to time. But a life-saving moment is where if you don't have this take place, if this does not happen, nothing good can happen in eternity. Because a life-saving moment is where you go from earth to heaven because of what happens in your life and you're washed by the blood and filled with his spirit. And we all need those life-saving moments. And Jesus said, I know you want to talk about the blind eyes and the deaf ears, but unless a man is born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Unless he's born to come out of, you, you must be baptized to be saved. Turn to your neighbor and say, you must be baptized. Turn to the other one and say, you probably need to be rebaptized. I'm going to wake you up. Here we go. Baptism comes from the Greek word baptismo, to be immersed or submerged underwater. If this happened to you, you were not baptized. I bet you don't fall asleep, sweetie. If you were sprinkled, I'm not making fun of it, but you were not baptized. Baptized means you go down under the water. You come out of the water. And Mark 16 said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. I'm going to keep this right here in case somebody needs it. (laughs) Baptism, going under, coming out of the water. You have to be baptized to be saved. It's not a suggestion. It's not, well, if you get around to it, maybe the Lord will let you in if you don't. You have to go under the water. You have to come out of the water. It is essential. It is essential how you get baptized. Tell your neighbor it's essential how you get baptized. Let's go to the Bible. Matthew 28, verse 19. Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. I did that, preacher, so I'm saved. Well, if I'm reading it right, Dad has a name. Because it said, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son. So the Son has a name. And of the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost has a name. Let's find out the name of Dad, the Father. John chapter 5 And verse number 43, John 5, 43, I am come, Jesus said, in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. John chapter 10 and verse number 30, I and my Father are one. If I was the devil, I'd leave Alexandria right about now. John 14, verse 6 through verse 9. John 14, 6 through 9. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Verse 7. Verse 7. Gee, if ye had known me, you should have known my Father also. And from henceforth, from right now, ye know him and have seen him. Him, verse number eight, Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth, it satisfies us. Let us see him, and we'll be satisfied. Verse number nine, Jesus saith unto him, have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. 
Now, I know you know the verses, but I'm not preaching to you right now. I'm preaching to somebody in this room that needs to realize there's only one Father, and his name is Jesus. And you should not get over when you receive that miracle, too. What's the name of the Son? Mark chapter 1, verse 1. We find it 20 times in the Gospels, beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We know he's the Son. Most Christians believe that. But they think that there's these three separate beings. But we already know that Jesus is the Father. We know he's the Son. What's the name of the Holy Ghost? John chapter 14 and verse number 26. The Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send. In my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have, he's going to repeat what I'm telling you. It's coming in my name. So the name of the Father is Jesus. The name of the Son is Jesus. The name of the Holy Ghost is Jesus. And if you're going to get your sins washed away, you better get them washed away in the name that washes away the sin. And that is the name of Jesus. Well, I can do it any way I want to. Well, it doesn't really matter. My great-grandma was baptized another way, and my grandma was too, so why does it really matter? That's between them and God, but I'm just going to keep giving you the Bible. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 5 and 6, there's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who's above all, Father, through all, Son, walk through the earth, in you all, Holy Ghost. There's only one way to be baptized. Colossians chapter 2 and verse number 9. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So guess what? If you're going to get your sins washed away, you got to do it the Bible way. And no one in the Bible was baptized in the Father, Son, or Holy Ghost. But everybody in the Bible that was baptized after the resurrection was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Acts 2, Acts 8, Acts 10, Acts 19, Acts 22. When you're baptized, you got to be baptized in his name. And if you don't believe that, I'll give you one more. Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, I know we're just, but I, I think I'm after somebody in the room. I don't know who you are, but I know you're in here. So, it doesn't matter how low you get, how bad of a person you are. What terrible things you've done. In fact, the worse it is, the better the candidate you are. And in fact, it's, the, it's a great testimony against the gates of hell. When you get in that water, there's nothing the enemy can do to stop it. I remember when our second child, Jet, was born, we had taken some newborn pictures of him and at the studio. And about six weeks later, we were going to this town to pick up the pictures that we had taken of him, and we were out in this country road. It was in Florida. It was about 103, 104 degrees in June, and we're driving to this, uh, this studio, and we're going through this country road. We go through a three-way traffic light, and the light's green, and I just keep flying. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw a man on his hands and knees on the side of the road, no car, no bicycle, headphones in, and just sobbing on the ground. And I, just, just, and I just kept driving. And about a mile down the road, you know, your wife can tell you anything. I'll wait on the guys. And she said, are you going to go back? And I was like, babe, I'm trying to find somewhere to turn around. She's like, you've passed 17 stops. I counted them. I'm like, well, okay. So I turn around to go back. I love what Bishop told me this week. He said, you got to flesh out Jesus everywhere you go. Don't just have a pulpit ministry. you got to go out there and release Jesus in the streets. Anybody can praise him in here. Anybody can praise him surrounded by your family. 
But revival breaks out when it's in the street. And so I pulled up to him. He still didn't know I was there. He was on, he's just crying so hard. And I walked up to him. I tapped him. He startled him. He, he looked up and he started screaming, please let me die. Please, I just want to die. I said, hey, what's, what's your name? He said, my name's Tito, Tito Sierra. I said, Tito, what, what's wrong, man? He said, I just want to die. I said, well, what happened? You mind telling him? I don't, you don't know me, but what happened? He said, you wouldn't understand. I said, just tell me. He said, my two-year-old daughter was killed yesterday in a car wreck. They tried to save her all day long, but she didn't make it last night. He said, I, he was just trembling and broken up, Pastor. He didn't know what to do. And he said, uh, he was on the ground. He said, uh, uh, after about several minutes of just trying to get his breath, he said, I went to the hospital with her all day, and I prayed, and, and nothing, nothing. And, and he said, and I, uh, I, I came home last night, and my truck had been repossessed when I got home. And he said, I don't care about it. I called my boss and said, my daughter was killed today. And I, I, I lost my truck, and he, I won't be at work tomorrow. And the boss said, you're fired. And he said, oh, okay, I don't even care about the job. He said, I don't care about the car, but my little girl's gone. I've got nothing to live for. So please, just let me die. And I said, Tito, you're right. It cannot get any worse. It can't. But it's going to get better. I said, because God sent me to where you're at. He said, well, you don't know. I said, Tito, I'm a preacher of this gospel, and Jesus knows you, and Jesus loves you. I said, suicide, get off him right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He will not die. He will live. All of a sudden, he wiped his tears, and he stood up on his feet. And I said, hey, let me give you a ride home. He said, no, I live around the corner. I'll, I'll walk. And I said, okay. I said, can I give you my phone number? I'm Josh. He said, yeah. So he gives me his phone number. I give him my phone number. I pray for him, and, and, he, and he, he starts walking away. I get in the car, and I'm driving about 30 seconds down the road, and the Lord said, tell him to read Acts 2.38. And I was like, I'm like, you're not supposed to text and drive. It's against the law. But okay, thy will be done. My wife said, what are you doing? I said, I'm obeying God. She's like, can you obey God and watch the road? <laughs> Tito, do you have a Bible? He texts back, yes, sir, I have one on my phone. I said, read Acts 2.38. Keep driving. 30 seconds later, a text comes in. I look at it. When can you baptize me? I said... <clears throat> I said, I can baptize you in the next 24 hours. Let me call a pastor. i got to go out of town to preach, but let me see if I can get a pastor in your town. And let me have the baptistry. He said, okay. So I called the pastor. I said, hey, do you mind if I use your baptistry uh, t- sometime tomorrow before I leave town? I need to baptize a guy I met in your town on the road. He said, man, go for it. I can have somebody meet you there at 2 o'clock. I said, perfect. That worked perfect. He said, it'll let you in, and we'll, we'll have robes. I said, awesome. Thank you. Hung up the phone. And if you give the devil 24 hours to stop someone from getting baptized... Have you ever witnessed to somebody and they promised you they'd be at church Sunday? And so I said, devil, I don't know what you're going to try. But whatever you try, I'm going to baptize that dude in Jesus' name. A few hours later, I just stopped there. I said, devil, I know you're up to something, but whatever it is, it's not going to work. We're going to baptize Tito in Jesus' name. He's going to get the Holy Ghost. Middle of the night, I woke up. I said, I don't know what's going on, but Lord... I, go, I command that breakthrough. He's going to get baptized in Jesus' name. I was waiting on that report from the enemy, you know. One o'clock, my phone rings an hour before the baptism. Now, here we go. Hey, Josh. I said, yeah. He said, it's Tito. I said, hey, Tito. He said, um, bad news. I said, okay. He said, a big brawl broke out at my house, a huge fight. He said, the cops are coming to arrest me. Uh, can you get here before they get here? I promise. I was like, and what? He's like, and baptize me. I said, so we're going to flee the scene. He's like, yeah. I said, on my way, bro. 
And when you wrestle hell for a soul, you don't care. You're just, I mean, we're going to get this in Jesus' name. So my wife said, where are you going? I said, there's a big brawl. The cops are coming to get Tito. I'm going to get him out of there before they get there. She's like, what? She's like, he gave me his address. I'm on my way. And so I'm driving there. I'm like, I don't know what's going to happen. So I pull up to the, it's a duplex. I pull up to the duplex. Nobody around. No cars. I'm like, what's going on? No policemen. All of a sudden, here comes Tito flying out of the woods. Blood, blood everywhere. I'm like, oh, this is actually happening. I really am going to go to jail for this. He gets in the car, go, 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 go. I'm like, oh, my word, we really are doing this. I thought you were kind of exaggerating, but okay. I'm calling the pastor. Hey, can we use the baptistry an hour early? He's like, why? I'm like, he just really wants to get baptized. He can't wait. He's really desperate. Well, he's like, sure, I'll, I'll call the guy. You'll, there's someone cleaning. You'll have to get in. He'll let you in. But the guy I'm sending, I'll tell him to come a little early. He'll be there a little after you get there. I said, okay. So we go in. We go around the back to baptistry. We get in the, the changing room. I said, there, get one of those robes and get in that room and change. And you come out, we'll baptize. Okay. So he, he goes in to change. When he's changing, the guy the pastor sends comes in. His name's Terrell, six foot five. Terrell walks in. And when Terrell walks in the, the lobby in the, in the, the waiting room, Tito comes out of the dressing room, and Tito goes, don't I know you, bro? And Tito's like, don't, and Terrell's like, don't I know you? And I'm like, let's all repent of our sins. I think it's bad enough, Tito. He's like, no, I know him. I said, I'm sure you do, but, you know, like, we kind of need to get in the water. You know, like, we're being followed. He's like, well, uh, I know, I know him. I said, it's okay. Let's repent. So we start repenting of our sins. I said, we're going to repent, Tito. We're going to put you in the water. After you come out of the water, your sins are going to be washed away. Everything you've ever done, when you get baptized, every sin you've ever committed, I don't care how, I don't care what it was, I don't care where it was, with who it was, your sins are washed away forever under the blood of Jesus Christ. See, when you come out of the water, God's going to fill you with the Holy Ghost. You're going to speak with other tongues. The Spirit of God's going to come out of you. He said, wow, who start repenting? And I said, okay, we're, we've repent, let's worship the Lord. He raises his hands, Bishop, and God fills him with the Holy Ghost in the dressing room. He's just like, boom. And, the, and Terrell's excited. And I'm like, man, the cops must be close. Because God's doing a really quick work. God's like, here you go, here, go, here, go. okay, you got it. So we get him in the water. We baptize him in Jesus' name. He comes out of the water, and God refills him with the Holy Ghost. He said, Josh... I never felt worse in my life yesterday, and I've never felt better than what I feel right now. He said, what is this? He said, I've never felt more peace. I said, God just washed away your sins, and he looked, he, went, he got out of the baptistry, went over to his phone, and I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm deleting some songs on my phone. I said, you got the real Holy Ghost. Sorry, I won't mess with some of you, I'm mad right now, I didn't mean to mess with you. And then he gets done, Bishop, and he looks at Terrell and goes, I know where I know you from. He said, did you six years ago or seven years ago drive around with a big truck with a sign that said, read Acts 238? Terrell said, yes, I did. How do you know? He said, you came to my duplex several weeks in a row taught my neighbor a Bible study every day. He said, well, I remember that. He said, every time I opened up my windows, there was a sign that said, read Acts 2.38. And then Josh sees me yesterday and tells me to read Acts 2.38. What's been going on around here? I said, what's been going on around here is God's been chasing you your whole life about to
Terrell took him home. We went to Hobby Lobby. I know that sounds like weird, but you'll see why. I told my wife, I said, we need to go to Hobby Lobby. She said, why? I said, well, I don't want to go in, but you need to go into Hobby Lobby. She said, why? I said, I need a cross. I need a marker, a magic marker. She said, a cross. I said, a cross like you see on the side of the road. She said, okay. She goes in and gets the cross and the magic marker. I drove back to the place where I found him on the side of the road. And I rode on that cross, Tito Sierra. Died June 5th, 2015. Born again June 6, 2015. And I slammed that cross in the side of the hill. People drive by there still today and think that someone died there. It's not a message to people. It's a message to hell. That no matter shut up, no matter what shut up, no matter what you do to somebody, no matter how low you take them, we have a God that can reach down in the side of the road and pull you out and save your soul. Would you stand to your feet and clap your hands and thank him for his mercy, for his grace, for his love? Stay standing. Would you turn to your neighbor beside you and ask them, have you been baptized in Jesus' name? Answer the question with a yes or a no. If they said no, tell them today's the day. Ask somebody else, have you been baptized in Jesus' name? If they said no, today's the day. If they said yes and you think they're lying, How many knows people lie in church? I taught a guy a Bible study for six weeks one time. He said he'd never been to church in his life, never baptized. He finally came. I watched him tell my wife, yes, I've been baptized. I was like, Kevin, you're lying. (laughs) Kevin got baptized that day in Jesus' name. (laughs) When God has me preach this, I don't play. Because I don't know who's in the room. I don't know what's going on. I've had people say, no, I'm not getting baptized and die that day. I've had people say, yes, I'm getting baptized and die that week. So when God tells me, preach baptism, I do not play. Because someone's in this room, and today is your day, and nothing is in your way. Nothing. Well, I want my mom to be here. Take a picture. You do it anyway 500 times a day. This is not about mom. This is about you and Jesus getting in the water, getting your sins washed away. Here's how we're going to do it. I know I'm at POA, and I know you're big and tough, and you're scary. But here's what I'm going to do. In a moment after we repent, I'm going to ask you, if you need to be baptized in Jesus' name, to come join me on this platform. And we're going to celebrate what God's about to do in people's lives. Are you ready? Let's all repent right now. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Forgive me for every thought, every word, every action, every sin of my heart, every sin of my mind, every sin of my past. Forgive me for every physical sin, every emotional sin every mental sin every spiritual sin financial sin anything that's not right in your sight i repent in jesus name for everything that i could do wrong didn't know i did wrong whatever it is in jesus name i repent of all my sins are you ready If you've not been baptized in Jesus' name, would you step out of your pew? If you don't know how you were baptized, you're not sure how, make sure how today. Would you step out of your pew and come join me right now on this platform? You've not been baptized in Jesus' name. Would you step out of your pew and come up here and we're going to baptize you in Jesus' name. Come on. 
Come on. Come on. What can wash away my sin? You all right, boss? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Come on. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood. Come on. Come on. We're just getting started. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. There we go. Come on. Anybody else? Come on. They're coming out of the balcony. They're coming out of the balcony. Somebody ought to help me worship the Lord. We're just getting started right now. Come on. They're coming. Today's your day. Today's your day. Today's your day. I wouldn't let anything or anybody keep me from this altar. This is the moment you've waited for. You may not like me, but you'll like it when you get to heaven and you're standing before the throne and your sins have been washed away in the name of Jesus, filled with the Holy Ghost. Come on. Anybody else? Come on. What are you doing, preacher? It's called spiritual warfare. It's called, here you go. Come on, come on, buddy. It's called God wants you to make a decision and hell wants you to wait and take your chances. But you need to obey the voice of God. Whether you're in the balcony, back row, front row, make up your mind. I'm going to do what the Lord wants me to do and I'm going to get my sins washed away in the name of Jesus Christ. Anybody else? Anybody else? What are you doing? I'm holding the door open. That's what I'm doing. Anybody else? Anybody in the balcony? Nobody's lying in church. Look at this. Isn't this awesome? Anybody else? Come on, bro. Come on now. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Come on. Come on. Anybody else? Can you thank the Lord for your new family that's right up here right now? It reaches to the highest mountain. It flows to the lowest valley. Aren't you thankful for the blood of Jesus that washes away sin? We were all in sin if it had not been for the mercy of the Lord. There's, there's more coming. There's more coming. More coming. Come on, let's thank the Lord. Angels are not, I promise you, the angels are not watching. They're having a party right now. Angels are rejoicing right now. Bishop, where do they go to get baptized? Where do they go? Okay, baptistry team, where are you? All right, we're going to take you out these doors and you're going to get baptized. We got robes, we got warm water. I was baptized in Alaska, it was not warm. We're going to go out those doors right there, guys. These doors, those doors. All right, follow the team, follow the team. Here we go. Can we thank the Lord for what's happening right now, POA? If you didn't want to come to the front but you want to get baptized, there you go. Head that direction. Today's your day. Today's your day. Today's your day. Maybe you've already been baptized. Maybe you need the Holy Ghost. Or you need to be refilled or somebody in your family needs a miracle. Would you raise your hand? Awesome. Would you come down to the front with me right now? Everybody in the building. Not, not just those that raise their hands. Everybody in the building. We're going to have a party. Let's have a party. I think it's fun to baptize people in Jesus' name. I think it drives the devil crazy. He gets so mad because there's nothing they can do to them anymore. Covered by the blood. Come on. Come on. Come on. Look at this. Everybody's coming. Come on. Awesome. Get as close as you can. Come on. 
Come on, right down here. Get as close as you can. There's a lot of people coming behind you. There you go. If you need the Holy Ghost, God's going to give you the Holy Ghost today. If you need a miracle, God's going to give miracles today. He's a miracle-working God. Come on down. Come on down by the fire. Come on down to the fire. Get as close as you can. Isn't this fun? It's like when a baby's born in the hospital, and no matter what you're going through and what room you're in, you hear the sound of the chimes that there's new life. It, it does something to, even though you're going through pain and, and you're in another room, you can hear the sound of life. That's what's going on right now. You're in a situation, but the chimes are ringing. Revival start. Revival start. Come on. Come on. All right. Who needs the Holy Ghost? Would you raise your hand? Who needs the Holy Ghost? One right here. One right there behind Bishop. Who needs, who needs something in their family? Raise your hand. Okay. We're going to worship the Lord. God's going to fill them with the Holy Ghost. And you're going to worship the Lord for your family. You're not going to ask the Lord. You're going to worship the Lord. I want you to bring up the situation specifically and say, Lord, I worship you for taking care. He's just got the Holy Ghost right now. He's speaking in tongues. One already got it just now. Come on, POA. One already got the Holy Ghost just now speaking in tongues. We didn't even pray for him. Would you raise your hands right now? By the authority of the word of the Lord Jesus, by the power of the name of Jesus Christ, I come against every attack, every stronghold, every battle in the marriage, every battle with your children, every lost loved one that's under attack. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, release miracles in homes right now. Release miracles in families right now. Release miracles in situations right now. Somebody shout the name of Jesus. 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 At the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow. He got them all shut on the higher. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. He got a bull shut from fire. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Whatever's going on right here, let there be a miracle. Let there be a miracle. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There you go. She's speaking in tongues. Let it go again. And she's got the Holy Ghost right here. She's speaking in tongues. That's it in Jesus' name. God's filling people with the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. Somebody worship him. Somebody worship him. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or even think. Yes. Let the party begin. Let the party begin. Let the party begin. I know we know the angels are rejoicing, but some must need to rejoice with them. I know this is awesome. It's what we normally do. But do you remember when you were in the water? Do you remember when you had your sins washed away? Would you celebrate with everything inside of you? They're gonna sing it again. But would you give God glory? Angels are rejoicing in Jesus' name. He did it. 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 In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now be released from this. Now, there you go. 
anxiety leave the room. Fear leave the room. Peace come into the room. Joy come into the room. Victory is a decision. Victory is a decision. Victory is a decision. enjoyed being with us here at the POA today to our online family. It has been a phenomenal day. The power of God is manifesting itself here and I know what it is doing wherever you are right now. The power of God is manifesting itself wherever you are in Jesus' name. You can take just a moment if you would like. Call on the power of His name. Call on the power of His blood. God can do a mighty work right now on your behalf. He can heal your mind. He can touch your mind. He can touch your family. God is able to move in your midst right now. Let the Holy Ghost fall in your situation in Jesus' name. If you've never been baptized in the name of Jesus, we would love to have the opportunity to baptize you in Jesus' name. Every sin washed away. If you live in this community, get in touch with us. We'd love to baptize you in Jesus' name. If you live in a community around this world, somewhere else, find a Pentecostal church that baptizes in the name of Jesus, get a hold of that pastor and say, I want to be baptized in his name so that every sin can be washed away. Thank you for being with us. The power of the blood wants to move in your life right now. In Jesus' name, may God bless you. We'll see you Wednesday night. Amen.